All right, welcome back everybody. This is part three of my ongoing series uh, going through the Chapin book, uh, which is known as the advanced techniques for the modern drummer book, I know, but I will always just call it by the short form Chapin. Um, this is our coordinated independence apply, as applied to jazz and bebop. Long story short, we're uh, learning how to play uh, coordinated independence in our limbs while playing this underneath a um, jazz ride and hi-hat on two and four pattern. So essentially the building blocks are being able to play time in jazz while comping. Um, I highly recommend if you're just starting out in this series or stumbled across this video and are interested in following along, I highly recommend that you start from the beginning. So again, this is part three. Part one can be found on my YouTube channel. So all you gotta do is scroll, uh, scroll down and you'll be able to find it. Uh, and I highly recommend getting a copy of this book too. If you get a copy of the book, it will make obviously more sense uh, being able to read through the parts and the patterns that we're playing through and being able to apply yourself to that. So those are my recommendations and I'm sticking to it. Um, <laughs> we're basically, just to recap, playing snare drum, left hand uh, on the phrases, kick drum on the phrases as well, individually, and then we're playing them in a unison phrase. So that means playing them at the same time. Uh, so without further ado, let's start off with page eight and actually one more reminder before we get into page eight, which is solo exercise 1A. Uh, you have to learn how to walk before you can run. This is, I would say, us learning how to jog a little bit. It's not quite extremely difficult, but if you're still having a hard time getting used to the material from pages four through to seven, I would highly recommend you stick to that for a while. Get more comfortable with it first before you get into uh, trying to learn the patterns on page eight. Um, but essentially up until this point, we've been playing everything as a one bar uh, repeated phrase. And uh, for the first 12 exercises, we we're doing that. Then we move into eight individual exercises on page seven that kind of work in melodic phrase form. So in other words, we're, we're trying to jumble up the phrases to be not so, uh, not so static and not so precisely the same. Uh, we're using more variation, which is what kind of helps us lead to this section on page eight. So learn how to walk a little bit more before you learn how to jog, which is what we're going to do in this part. But without further ado, let's get started. One, two, one, two, three, four.
So just as a reminder here, the concept of me doing the snare by itself, kick by itself, and then playing the patterns in unison, is that we're trying to build up to being able to, to develop the four limb coordination or the four limb independence that we really want to develop when we're playing true jazz or true bebop comping phrases. So the way that we're kind of introducing that is by getting the left hand and the right foot to play that so um, together in unison. So by doing that, you're kind of developing it in steps and stages and basically trying to get to a jumping off point in order to get more comfortable with playing four limb independence. If at this point you're feeling pretty good, I obviously would say, you know, keep developing it this way that I'm doing in the videos. And I will be doing this for, um, for the majority of the time that we're doing the basic patterns in this book. Um, a lot of you will obviously understand that as we keep moving on in, in the series. But if you are feeling fairly comfortable with what we're doing at this point, and you do want something to challenge yourself, here are a couple different ideas that you can try that will help to kind of spruce up that four limb independence playing and will basically allow you to challenge yourself a bit. Oh, one, two, three, four. 